Welcome, welcome, fam. We are so, so excited to be back with y'all today. We want to give a shout out to UC Berkeley for hosting us today. We are all together for the first time in studio, and we're super excited to be together in person to give you all something that you've been asking for. Um, we received several requests that we spend a little bit more time sharing a little bit about our stories as we keep featuring different community members. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna do a full day in the studio. We're gonna feature each one of us in an episode. Today we have the pleasure of featuring Martin, who's gonna come to the mic and answer some of the questions that came in from the community from the Mani Conganas community, and we are going to be as honest and transparent as possible so that you all feel that this is a community space. Remember that Mani Conganas is all about learning in public and being willing to grow and learn and unlearn with each other. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and pass the mic to Francisco, who has the first question for Martin today. Yeah, hi everyone. So thanks again for uh, tuning in. I'm very excited, I mean, We've all had uh, have spent a lot of time together, have gotten to know each other. And yeah, some of those questions are more of like, for example, for you, Martin, just maybe a little bit of like your background, like where you're from, what you've studied, what do you currently do, just to give us a, a brief oversight of that. Sure, yeah. So, hey, everybody. My name is Martin Mercado. Um, I'm 24 years old. Uh, I live in the Coachella Valley, Palm Springs area right now. Um, my pronouns are he, him. Um, it's great to be back here at UC Berkeley on campus on the ethnic studies floor. Fantastic to be reunited with these gentlemen. Um, yeah, and by trade, I guess you could say I do crypto full time. So I'm a crypto trader slash, um, you know, investor, you could say. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, that's what I do full time. It's, you know, I met, I met these guys a couple months ago and we kind of had an idea to create this little podcast this little community where we discuss everything about money you know from our personal experience with it to broader um broader just happenings and lessons that we've all learned growing up so it's fantastic to be able to be in community with with everybody here and everybody tuning in so yeah that's me in a nutshell you could say Um, why did you decide to create a uh, Money Con Ganas? Or why did you, like, what part of it for you played into Money Con Ganas? Sure. So, um, actually, I, it was kind of weird how it all happened. It happened kind of quick. But in a nutshell, um, basically, I just got into the financial world of investing. And since then, you know, I've I've made a ton of connections with new people and, you know, I started off with stocks, then I got into crypto and quit my full-time job to to trade crypto and, and make a living off of that. Um, so much so that, you know, I met all you cool people on the way. And, you know, from the conversations that we started having for meeting y'all, we had, you know, kind of, we kind of came to the realization that money is something that we don't really talk about in our communities. Um, we've all kind of hinted at that at past episodes, right? So it's, I think it's important to have a space where um, people of color um, discuss these things because money can be seen as a taboo subject. We don't, eso no se dice de esas cosas no se hablan, right? In our communities, uh, when it comes to investing, we know very little because most of all don't even, you know, our families where we grew up and just our socioeconomic upbringing and conditions don't even let us kind of, have access to these spaces of information, how to invest, what to invest in, you know, what, what's an asset, what's all these things, right? So um, from that arise the need to kind of create this, this space. And I'm kind of like the crypto guy, you could say. All of us kind of do crypto <laughs> as well. Um, but that's what I do full time, so. Hey, Martin, just um, going back to, to you doing um, crypto full time, uh, can we just, give people like a time frame so right now it's like february 2nd 2022 right when we're filming this the height of bitcoin in the recent times of this bull run was like a couple of months ago so can you just uh, outline when you started trading crypto full-time or like when was that shift was that in the last like year the last 18 months when when did that happen 
Sure. So I have a little more than a year investing into crypto. I started November of 2020, I remember. Um, and I, it was just Bitcoin at that point. That's when kind of the mainstream media was was popping off with, you know, you had Michael Saylor and all these all these big Wall Street people, traditional smart money people starting to gospel, evangelize and gospel about um, Bitcoin. And so I really dug deep, did research. I was into stocks at that point. And, you know, I, I had all my savings, put them all in, even asked my parents for some money, asked them to give me some of theirs, put that shit into Bitcoin. Um, and then from there, I just, the rabbit hole just fucking got deep. Uh, I went into the world of altcoins, you know, all these different ecosystems. This is an, an emerging technology and, and it's also a financial market that's very lucrative, very volatile. But as you said, um, you know, we, it's, we have huge swings to the upside in just a matter of weeks, months. On the, same, on the other end of that, um, we also have huge downsides. So it's a very volatile profession, um, but I'm young. I can take the risk. I can afford to bet on myself like that. Everybody should at some point too, right? So um, yeah, that's, I've kind of been in the space almost a year and a half now. It's fantastic. I quit my full-time job. I haven't looked back since. Don't get me wrong. I miss the steady paychecks and the benefits, but hey, you know, <laughs> fuck it. You got to take risks sometimes. So yeah. So as we as we're getting into a little bit of of your of your current money world, um, something that that folks were really curious about is they want to learn a little bit more about our our values, our politics, and and how do those key components shape your relationship with money, shape how you move in the context of money. So invite us a little bit about what comes up for you when you think about the values and politics that shape your approach relationship and, and money flow. Yeah, that's a great a great point to touch on because, you know, we're here on the fifth floor, ethnic studies, ethnic studies floor um, department here at UC Berkeley. You would, you know, I kind of was radicalized in my education here, you could say, which is great, right? Um, and now I fucking do crypto. I trade financial markets. What the fuck is that? You know, that's a complete kind of 180. <laughs> so, um, but I'm very glad that I had that education and that, uh, that privilege of being able to study all that because it informs how I operate and navigate these markets. Um, number one, I just want, you know, you know, some kind of financial stability for me and my family. But the most important thing that I've come to realize from playing in speculative markets, because that's what it, that's what crypto and stocks are. There's, there's speculative markets um, where people, it's, it's essentially gambling based off of metrics, figures, different things. Um, hoping that you make money whether that's on a short term short time frame or long time frame um what i've come to realize from a year and a half of investing over time is that these violent these uh these markets are violent as fuck not in the sense of the volatility but they're designed so that the minority of people extract value and the majority do not um so on a long enough time horizon yeah long-term investors make money but Keep in mind that it's all supply and demand, right? There's other factors, but those are the most important things. Um, and as so, as long as there's enough liquidity coming in, enough buying pressure, obviously, then the asset that you're invested in goes up, right? Um, but you know, a lot, of, especially for something like crypto, it's a lot of it is kind of built on hype. A lot of people try to pump their own bags. Um, a lot of newbies come in thinking they're gonna make with the promise of 100x, I'm going to make all this money, right? But in reality, most of them are just exit liquidity. And they, the little money they do make sometimes, they just give it all back to the market because the big players, the big whales dump on them. Um, and it, it's a violent game. Really, it's a zero-sum game trading, um, investing. So it's a violent-ass game. I mean, even though, you know, the running joke on, like, crypto Twitter is that WAGMI, we all going to make it. That's that's that couldn't be further from the two truth. Um, most people, you know, and I I've lost a lot of money like over multiple times, and I've I've gotten better and better now. But really, that's what that's what it is. When you sell, when you take profits, there's there's somebody on the other side of that trade, right? For every buy, there's somebody on the other side that's selling. So, oftentimes, you know, you can be caught as exit liquidity um, for somebody else's profits, and the, the so navigating that reality. Um, with that in mind, knowing that I'm, I'm honestly participating in that as well, I'm complicit um, for every time that I make, you know, profit and I'm selling, I know that buyer, I just, they're probably buying the top because they might not have as much experience, right? So it's a violent game. That's speculation. It's a zero sum game. 
Um, so that's the main important like lesson that I've come to learn that it's violent. It's it's fucked up. It's capitalism. Like somehow extracting value from others. You know, it's it's really a zero sum game. Yeah. So so invite us a little bit um, to what are your what are your aspirations and your goals for the revenue that you're making, the money that you're making, or whatever. Because when you started the question, you talked about how important it was to be in the ethnic studies floor, to be radicalized, some of the life experiences that you've had. And then you gave us a little bit of like the reality of what it means to be in the crypto world and market and the politics there. So what's your why? What's the what's the, what's driving you to say, yes, I want financial stability. I want to take care of my family and my community. What are some of the visions and projects that being part of the crypto world is going to allow you to contribute to, if any? Um well yeah number one like I said you know I I struggle with with that a lot because um you know I want that financial stability but I'm, again I'm complicit no matter what in a in a in a system that is not necessarily designed for the benefit of the many um however you know I hope at some point to generate enough wealth for me and my loved ones and eventually the broader community wherever it is that i'm at however you define that community um and kind of redistribute that in some way if it, if i ever get to that point it's kind of fucked up to kind of rely on like generosity of on the generosity of wealthy people right like even i think the ceo of disney said that like we shouldn't have to rely on the philanthropy of a few billionaires to fucking fund shit right but that's just the reality that we live in right now so that's my ultimate goal in life is just you know, generate ca enough capital, redistribute some of that. And um, uh, I don't know if that really answered your question, but just on a personal level, that's what I'm doing. Up, and on another level, like this is an emerging asset class where it has the potential to disrupt the world, right? We hear of phrases like the metaverse, you know, NFTs, right? All these kind of new coin terms that are popping off in, in the digital stratosphere. And so really, honestly, a lot of this is going to change our day-to-day -day, right what we call web 3 is now also synonymous with with the metaverse where you own your own data you are no longer the product but you are it's, it's kind of hard to explain but a lot of shit is changing and so it's good to have some exposure as well just you know um yeah yeah martin you you kind of alluded to what i want to ask you next is more of like what are like one or two lessons that you've learned in the personal finance, crypto space, it could be one and one, but just like what are some lessons that have stood out in the last, I don't know, year to five years, I mean, since you graduated college till now, that you can share in terms of like what has stood out and what you still like follow in terms of like your mantra or your belief system or, or however you want to define it? Mm, that's a good question. That's a kind of tough question to answer. Um, yeah, it also doesn't help that I'm a little hungover right now, so that's kind of deep, deep question right there, but we, we can always edit that out. We'll see. <laughs> no, just I want to keep in that in there. Um, yeah, my mantra, you know, it's, I don't really, I don't know, I don't really, off the top of my head, I don't really have one. I guess I'm just flowing, just vibing, going with life right now, I'm trying to learn, learn from other people, you know, always be a lifelong learner, open to, you know, learning new things, being humble um not being a know-it-all you know just information 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 right resources always seek out there's always ways to you know now in this digital world that we live in there's so many we can you can be bombarded with information so overall kind of my philosophy in life right now is to just you know develop some kind of hobby something that i like for me that's trading right now and just go with it you know, there's enough ways to make a living off of things right now. So I'm young enough to take that risk and fuck it. I'm doing it, you know, so a ver que, I don't know if that's really a philosophy, but no, no, that's that's good. And um, I think I was like in the same vicinity, um, but I'm not going to let you off the hook <laughs> um, since we don't have one or two things that lessons or mantras. What about one or two things that you wish you had known growing up that you think would have changed the way you approach personal finance the way you approach your day-to-day -day now like what are some things you wish that maybe other folks younger folks at that who are high school starting off in college or starting off 
um, life that would be very beneficial that you think you would have wanted as you were coming up? Yeah. Um, just overall, I guess something good that people might find uh, helpful is, you know, life is short and, you know, it's, it's for me, it's, it's better to, I mean, the whole point of us starting this podcast is kind of to discuss these things, right? Um, all right, I'm gonna definitely cut that shit out. Um, I just, man, ahorita me, el café no me está pegando. Right? <laughs> DJ Choco. Also, me. let's be mindful of time. So how, how, got, how long has it been? Gotta, 15 minutes? Yeah. It's, it's 15 minutes? Uh, yeah, almost 16. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're still good. Just like, maybe like, let's be, yeah. let's be efficient. Let's move ourselves yeah, yeah. towards wrapping up Martin's episode, so. Yeah, we'll cut that. Sorry, bro. Oh, you're, you're good. good. Um, is that last thing we should ask or what? Yeah, is that, we're yeah. going to the last one. Yeah, we're, we're going to the last one. So, Martin, what are what is something personal that you would like to share with the community, with the Money Con Ganas community, and that you would like them to actually know about you um, that a lot, perhaps not many people know? Yeah, um, I'm huge on sports, uh, dude. So, like, you know, all the leisure, all the time that I have, I'm, I'm now that I'm kind of on a good sleeping schedule now, I have... A lot of free time because <laughs> that's one of the things about crypto i tend to stay up really late because it's a 24 7 market um so i now that my sleeping schedule is fixed i love to fucking do sports snowboarding once or twice a week so you guys always see me on the slopes you know like i'm posting on ig and all that um biking i just bought a bike dude so i'm trying to do that i'm trying to learn how to surf um i just love to be outside working out so that's like the one hobby that i want to keep doing the rest of my life so long as i can right um, with this kind of uh, career that you could say I'm, I'm engaging in right now. So I fucking love sports, snowboarding, skating, surfing, all that shit. Sign me up. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, just to, to finish it up, um, can you tell us just very favorite movie, favorite music artist, and then favorite food? Right now I'm fucking a lot with Bad Bunny. I just got some tickets to his new tour. Hey, shout out Bad Bunny. Um, She's probably my favorite artist right now. Um, you know, that perreando, reggaeteando. Um, and <laughs> food, fuck. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of uh, Asians, so just anything Asian I fuck with. Favorite movie? Um, let's see. I, it's not my favorite, but I just watched it, and it relates to financial markets. It's a good watch. Uh, the Big Short, um, that's a good one. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, Martin. Uh, we are coming to the end of uh, this episode with, you know, you sharing more about yourself. So just thank you for, for being um, open, willing to, to share a lot of the, the kind of learning lessons that you have found in the last couple of years. Also sharing your life experience. I think it's um, really great. I'm sure we'll do some of these more in the future. So for anyone that's listening, if you have more questions, have other things you would like to to ask any of us, please feel free to, you know, find us on social media at Money Con Ganas on Instagram, TikTok. And that way we could also do a follow up episode. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I know we all appreciate it. Um, also, thanks to Ruben and Jossim. And again, thank you for um, the center that we're in right now just allowing us to to record i think that's um has been a, a great experience thus far so appreciate everyone's support